as a lay person, I think that my takeaway so far, my, my, the, my general sense is that <clears throat> UFOs, this whole thing, is a, a good thing because they don't want us to blow up the world with nuclear weapons. Well, people want that to be the case. I wish that was the case. The evidence doesn't suggest that's the case. Um, <clears throat> I think UFOs don't want us getting too powerful. I don't think that... Because you don't just look at the nuclear weapons. you got to go back thousands of years and go... In the earliest documentations of mankind's encounters with the spirit world, what was happening? Just macro brushstroke. Okay. And it's always about managing, suppressing consciousness, confusing our belief systems, Ugh. and and keeping us separate from one another, and not letting us get powerful. The, you know. There was another component of the uh, the that Pleiadian theory, which was that. Uh, and by the way, I think it was like 300,000 years ago they said that they unplugged the DNA. Um, there was another piece to it, which was that the the entities that unplugged us were uh, nourished, not by physical matter, but nourished by emotion. Yeah. They actually, uh, were their, 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 their sustenance was, and, and specifically fear. Yes. So fear feeds this this entity that that controls us mm -hmm. and so it's in their interest that we be afraid yeah there's a i was just reading a book in asango where there's a ufologist that got invited to this seance thing where they were channeling and interacting with this like fucking demon or something and they're all sitting in a circle and then they put the one guy in the middle and he starts channeling and gets possessed by this entity and the first entity is like hey we're we're we are we are these entities that are adjacent to you in another timeline and all this stuff and we can't feel emotion but we need you to host to help us feel emotion but then shit starts going horribly wrong paranormal stuff the temperature drops all this weird shit and everyone in that room except for two people died within six months and weird occurrences and this guy was one of the guys that didn't and what i find is really strange about that is that when you you know having a host consciousness in your body um and then looking at some of the visitations and what some of the evidence looks like it looks like there's there's beings that don't have it's like maybe they don't have souls maybe they're ai maybe they're a different life form like an insect that grew it's like well i'm not scared of a goldfish so i leave earth i come back 10 billion years later that goldfish is a t-rex and you're like yeah. whoa and then you leave earth and then go that t-rex is now like a lot shorter and it's like a fucking lizard dude that's telepathic and building spaceships and you're like it took like 20 billion years but it happened because no one fucking fucked with this planet you know right so you can see how life just grows in a certain direction so then you kind of wonder well if something grew for millions billions of years that never had a consciousness to begin with like a fly or something and then now it can kind of pop over laterally into our fucking timeline it's going to come on you like flies on dog shit. Oh, what is this? Huh? What is this? And they're just like looking at you. Right. How scary would that be if in your bed and you got these big bug eyed insects that are like, what are you? What is going on? And they start cutting you open and they're like, and then all of a sudden you get scared and they're like, that's an interesting energy. They're all feel that we can feel something. You know, I can see that being the case where emotion and feeling and love is like so gnarly. It's like they want to understand it. They want to have it. But what if they figure out like hypothetically, what if they figure out that, um, that we're immortal, that our soul is part of something greater and bigger. Right. And we might die and have a painful life, but we learned all our lessons and we might reincarnate, you know, to learn more, whatever. And they're sitting here going, if we die, we have nothing. They're all, we want that. And then what if we have those interactions and we start writing books in the Bible that says Satan wants your soul, demons want your soul, you know? It starts to all make a little bit more sense, right? It's a crazy bigger picture. It's just me riffing. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> just me riffing. So is that what they're doing when they're like abducting people like that uh, Fire in the Sky movie? The evidence the... from people that have had interactions for fucking thousands of years, including the past hundred years on all different types of people, ethnicities, and different fucking cultures and different continents, tends to point the same direction, that they're very interested in our consciousness and our soul. And they're very interested in making sure that we don't know they're here and that we don't all align and understand who we are, what we're capable of. And like 
because the truth is, is once we understand what consciousness is and it's not Jesus, <laughs> you know, right. once we understand that, then we start realizing <clears throat> you can move objects with your mind. You can hear people's thoughts telepathically. Like if you meet a chick and she wants to fuck you, that's telepathy, but it's such a primal animal frequency. You can feel it. Wow. This chick's like game, right? But if you see that same chick and she's sad, you don't really feel that just instantly. You might kind of, it's just not as strong and easy as like a sexual kind of frequency or something. Well, that's all telepathy. And I think like once we learn like what we're capable of and how to use, how to, how to transduce our environment. I mean, cause they're already doing this, dude. I just downloaded a shit ton of documents two days ago from the McDonnell Douglas corporation aircrafts in the fifties. And it's all from the tangential programs of the main UFO program describing how to merge your conscious and subconscious together to move objects with your mind and how that's going to relate to the propulsion system. It's fucking crazy. Your thought will move the craft. So, so th that's what Bob Lazar was talking about, how yeah. they're building the, the crafts. Was Bob Lazar, is, the reason we all know about Area 51 is because of him. My company, To the Stars, put out his autobiography. It's called Dreamland. It's rad. Yeah. It's totally rad. Yeah. And I, I, I believe him. I think he's telling the truth. When, when you say that they're worried, they're, they're, the UFOs don't want humans to become too powerful... I, and I think there's more than one too. Like I don't think there's like right. one group here. So it's hard. Like we all sure, 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 It's like I, it's like when we. It would be more right. better to say UFOs. It's probably better to say you know competing intelligences because who knows? Right. It's like you're in the ocean. You see a dolphin. So you're like, okay, so this place is full of dolphins. Then you see a fucking jellyfish. You're like, whoa, that's weird. You see a whale, right. but then you see a coke can, and you're like, then you find the boat but you're still not even thinking that the boat's from land, <laughs> you right. know? So we don't know. The universe has all that, you know? Fair, fair point. I just think that, like, when I think of humans becoming too powerful, that's a concept that I, that I can kind of grasp when I see the way, you know, just consider the way we've paved over the world. We've, like, you know, environmental destruction, you know, like, I feel like, we've kind of become too powerful. Yeah, I think, you know, I don't think anyone can disagree that like, we're like destroying the planet and destroying each other, which is like, we have the technology to do that before we have the spirituality to not do that, you know? Right. It's like we, this idea that, you know, but this is the other thing. The universe to me, it looks to be what we call duality where every particle has a counterpart. So every, sure. every atom has like a, a negative and a positive particle. The, the realm of the relative. And well, you have light, you have dark, you have opposites, mm -hmm. you have the past <clears throat> and the future. All, everything is like duality. So even when you look at earth, there's a dual system. You have democracy and freedom and free will, and then you have authoritarianism and controlled and absence of love, absence of individuality, and it's competing systems, but I think it's representative of the universe we live in. You gotta think of the yin and the yang symbol. That's like very real, that's, the du that's duality. Every ancient religion talked of duality. We have heaven and hell. The Mayans had the two-faced God or whatever. The Gnostics have the exact same thing where you have you know, varying versions of <clears throat> a supreme loving kind of realm and something that's opposite, that's entropy and falling apart. And I think that like, I think we're just stuck in the middle of it, you know? It's called Stevo's Hot Sauce for Your Butthole. And if you go on Amazon and type in Stevo's Hot Sauce for Your Butthole and order yourself a bottle, you'd be really helping me. Because right now we're ranked number 30 on all of Amazon. And if you buy a bottle, we might go up the ladder. And that would mean a lot. So please get on Amazon and buy Stevo's Hot Sauce for Your Butthole. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, dude.